హలో అండ్ వెల్కమ్ టు ద ఎసెన్స్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ వీక్లీ మీటింగ్ దిస్ మీటింగ్ ఈజ్ అ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద ఎసెన్స్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ విచ్ ఈజ్ అన్ ఆన్లైన్ అండ్ ఫ్రీ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఫర్ ద సీకర్స్ ఆఫ్ ద పాత్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ ఫర్ దోస్ హూ వాంట్ టు లర్న్ ద పాత్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ అండ్ ఇన్ దీస్ మీటింగ్స్ ఐ ట్రై టు ఆన్సర్ యువర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ క్లియర్ యువర్ డౌట్స్ హెల్ప్ ఇన్ యువర్ వెరిఫికేషన్ అండ్ కండక్ట్ ఎగ్జామ్స్ ద పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ get entry into this uh, group after step number 2 and uh, remain here for the rest of the program those who are interested they can uh, register for the program for free on uh, gyanmark.guru website for those who are listening on youtube links are provided so we'll begin our meeting today all questions are most welcome all questions are invited Bhupen is asking there is never an experiencer if there is no experience and does this mean life is always present in the existence as a non living thing cannot experience itself so there is a obvious mistake in the question that uh, it is assumed that uh, there will be a time when there will be no experience always remember that when you consider the experience and the experiencer together you must remember that they are one the clay and pot are one the gold and the ornament are one the wave and the ocean are one the pot is never seen without clay the ornament is never seen without the gold the form is never seen without the essence what is the form of existence experience what is the essence of the existence experiencer they are always present so if you remove this uh, assumption and the question itself goes away but if you still have any doubt that yes the experience can disappear and something will remain in the existence let me know when did that happen for you let me know through your direct experience how was that possible that the whole form of the existence disappeared some day and we had to find what happens in the existence if all the forms disappear who is there to know what remains in the existence whether non living or whether living whether something that cannot experience itself or whether some other kind of illusion experience who will remain how will that knowledge happen so these questions they fall in the category of what if questions what if this happens what if that happens we also call them imaginary questions so the answer will never appear the answer will never be obtained because there is always an assumption in the question for example i imagine that i have 1 million in my bank account then i ask what will be the life like if that 1 million disappear it is uh, a, an imaginary question because there is no 1 million there Okay, Bhupen is saying, question is just compulsive while going through the video of POK. No problem. These thoughts or questions are produced by the mind because it is still dwelling in the thought, not in the experience. Path of knowledge is based on direct experience. No theory, no thinking, no imagining, no concepts come in the present. Whenever you encounter these kind of questions or thoughts, what if or imaginary which is never in your direct experience and will never be it is impossible to be in direct experience you should sit simply sit watch watch the illogical thoughts because obviously it is simply imagining something there is no logic behind it and come back in the present what is now that's all you need to do sometimes i say jokingly that uh, on the path of knowledge we will never get any answer only the questions are destroyed why is that because all questions arise from not knowing your true nature not knowing that you are that existence all the questions arise from some kind of ignorance some kind of assumption some kind of imaginary concepts in the mind and as soon as we see that yes there is no such thing it is simply imagination of a uh, indoctrined mind when that is seen the question is destroyed why why no answer there are no answers there is no knowledge in the existence there is nothing to know in the existence you are that 
see is there anything to know in this pure being which i am whatever it knows whatever this instrument knows is false whatever impressions this memory gathers from the senses is actually an illusion the best that can be done is that we can remove these illusory concepts and come back in the pure being pure state where there is no need of any question it is already whole and complete full beautiful as it is there is no need of the pollution of the mind so when we come back in this state that that is called the state of bliss and peace existence is not something very big which has countless things which we can know no it is this present moment right now right here you are the whole existence nothing else is there everything that appears is false that which perceives the appearances is the truth is the essence there is nothing to know in the false it will be all false there is nothing to know in the truth it is all already perfect it is already without any qualities there is nothing to know there it is just being knowing not knowing ignorance knowledge they happen when there is thought especially the thoughts which say look this can be true look that can happen so simply observe that this is all is going on and it is also fine because this is going on in the complete emptiness of what you are on the empty screen of what you are nothing is wrong here assuming that whatever the mind is saying is absolutely true there can be an answer that is simply disturbance in the bliss once you know yourself all questions are silenced there is another example of imaginary questions what will happen if the existence disappears tomorrow it is it seems to be very logical because everything comes and goes what if the whole existence disappear so can there be an answer for this or do you need to really find an answer for this or do you need to simply find the cause of the question the cause of the question is existence is assumed to be something which comes and goes and happens in time existence is simply seen as an experience that happens and it is assumed that there is somebody something which will remain after the existence is gone to know what happens so lot of ignorance that's all there is behind this question especially after doing the basic analysis and advanced analysis these questions should disappear nothing will come nothing will go there is never a moment where there is no experiencer there is never a moment where there is no experience the moment itself assumes that there is time appearance and disappearance these sentences assume that there is time but uh, there is no such thing actually in existence it is timeless so it will be totally um, incorrect to say that there is never an experiencer or to say that there is never an experience or to assume that these two things are independent one can disappear and then we can check what happens to the other no they are mutually exclusive but they are one experience cannot be the experiencer experiencer cannot be experienced but they are one when you want to study them separately you come down to the level of duality forget about the one part of the existence and start analyzing the remaining part that is possible but as soon as you consider them both you must come into the level of non duality because they are not separate here and you will see that the relation between the experience and the experiencer is not of dependency it is of oneness it is not that the experiencer is dependent on the experience that if one goes i also go no and it is not that uh, the experience is dependent on the experiencer if the experiencer disappeared who will experience no this question should not arise the the relation is not of dependency when face of the coin does not depend on the other face of the coin they are one keshav is saying your answer also covers what i also observed whenever practicing awareness whatever thoughts come are mostly distraction sometimes i feel a silencing effect on all questioning and answering of mind 
like ice cold water is poured freezing all the exactly this is the nature of the mind it keeps producing something it can be desire it can be memories of the past it can be something imaginary but that is not called the contemplation that is not really contemplation contemplation will cause silence like he said because the question is destroyed and when there is nothing to think about the mind becomes silent or it will think something else because that is the nature of the mind it is always moving so for a second it drops and slowly these events become more and more and uh, you can find that unnecessary thoughts are gone and this is possible in the case of ordinary thoughts also not related to our uh, spiritual enquiry like uh, a desire arrives in the mind from somewhere i want this i want that i want to do this i want to, uh, how i will do this when i'll get this these are thoughts the mind is producing because its job is to produce these kind of thoughts as long as it is alive it will keep doing it if you see it in awareness you will find that most of the, these things are totally unnecessary if something is necessary the mind will not think too much it will simply do it the body will go forward do it rest is echo chamber it is simply echoing the memory all the time this becomes a problem when these thoughts and desires are negative in nature like it is bringing up something negative bad events in the life or it is bringing up worries or fears which have never have happened which are imagined to happen in the future that is called worry or fear and that causes a bad state of mind so awareness simply destroys these things it has a silencing effect awareness when will that happen yes you will need to practice it for a long time to achieve that kind of state of the mind and actually you will see that this can be extended further into sensations of the body not only mental events bodily events suppose you are feeling very hungry now an ordinary person will get disturbed will start searching for food will start eating something will leave whatever work they are doing but if you are in awareness you can see the hunger arising you can see it as a sensation in the body then you will see all the thoughts in the mind and desires in the mind images of food whatever and you can actually stop it for some time obviously you won't be able to stop the hunger for long time but you can finish your work you can uh, let some time pass suppose it is a meeting suppose it is a satsang suppose you are writing your notes in the program and you can let it pass simply seeing the bodily sensations makes them silent they go go away obviously if it is necessary it will come back again that much i have seen sometimes it causes very strange experiences like if you are in complete awareness and you watch yourself watch the body falling asleep lie down in the bed and hold a very strong intention that let the body do whatever it does in sleep but i'll hold the awareness of whatever happens and you will find yourself in some other world that is the most interesting application of awareness so awareness has its own uh, you can say advantages but uh, we do, do not run after the advantages we run after awareness and then there are side effects of being aware which are mostly positive yes, there can be sometimes some effects which are strange like when you wake up in the morning you think that i never slept i was always awake or you can see each and every impurity of your mind because you are so aware and that causes a little bit of uneasiness mind reacts sometimes like a thief reacts when it is seen stealing something so <laughs> that is the self defense of the mind it is the illusion mind is the only illusion ravindra is saying if existence is emptiness how can it appear in a different name and form how come it has the potential to appear in finite possibility the word emptiness means infinite possibility emptiness does not mean that there is nothing can you define emptiness write down the definition of emptiness i am asking ravindra assuming my definition is wrong what was the definition of 
emptiness in our program yes emptiness is potential only but the meaning of the word emptiness is that there is no reality a solid reality of which the experiences and the experiencer are made up of not matter not energy not anything fancy not anything imaginary there is nothing it is all illusion you can see that the experiencer is empty that is very obvious but uh, it will take a little bit of effort contemplation to see that the experience is also empty it is not made up of something why because it keeps changing you see simply seeing that the experience is changing you can conclude it is empty because if it were real if it it had something it will leave behind that thing but that never happens there is no separate essence of the experience other than the experiencer this must be your direct experience this should be seen directly it is not an assumption when you say if existence is emptiness and that means they are synonyms existence and emptiness mean the same thing the whole so right now you can see that the existence is experience and the experiencer these two things which are not things it is right now like this and there is no how there is no how come there is no why which we covered in the basic analysis of the existence so you can uh, substitute the word emptiness in place of existence do the same analysis why is there emptiness why is it appearing how come it is appearing what is the process there and you will find <laughs> you will find the questions are destroyed because uh, emptiness is misunderstood as an event or object something or non presence here in your question you are assuming that emptiness means nothing nothingness zero although we keep saying uh, these although we keep using these words it is zero it is nothing but we assume that you understood what these words mean in philosophy suppose you assume that emptiness means nothing absolute absence how will we know that it is absolute absence some experiencer must be there something must experience that there is absolute absence now and that means the experience is already there now it needs a memory an instrument like senses eyes ears something to sense the absolute absence and now there is an experience also there is a person there there is a seeker so the existence uh, is already there it is not absolute absence so uh, you can analyze like this you can try to propose the opposite and try to prove it falsify it whatever and you will always see existence is absolute presence not absence it is absolute presence which has no material substance it has no base it does not depend on something else and everybody will recognize now everybody will understand why is that because it is the base it is the most fundamental its essence is experiencer the experiencer also has no other substance its form is experience the experience has no substance that's why it is called empty but it is there how is it possible no how no why these questions do not apply to the most fundamental things these are the most basic things if you show that ex- experience and the experiencer are actually one which is the knowledge of oneness or non duality that uh, gives you an idea that yes if one is empty the other must be empty because both are one if gold is gold and ornament is gold both are gold if experience is empty experiencer is empty yes existence is empty the word emptiness is chosen so that you do not assume the existence as a space something happening in time or as an event or as a person anything at all because the mind has this tendency to impose some kind of object on the whatever words it hear hears it has a tendency of objectification of everything why because all it knows are objects the mind knows nothing except the objects the mind means intellect it deals with objects only it knows objects only 
it does not know that which is fundamental so negative words are chosen knowingly so that you can drop these wrong notions so whenever you think about a word always write down the definition first especially the newcomers this is my suggestion to newcomers whenever you contemplate you see a question arising in your mind first thing you should do is write down the definition mostly simply thinking about the definition will destroy the question yes little confusion about the definition only some people do not like the word emptiness don't use it then <laughs> use it use the other words like without qualities nirgun in sanskrit they mean the same and they are also negative i think all the questions are answered for today so we can end our meeting here and i'll see you next time thank you everybody for attending the meeting keep practicing namaste